Hey guys, Matt here with Matt's Vintage Video Games. Guys, if you're watching this video, then you either have purchased or you're thinking about purchasing one of these. These are my retro game machines. These have thousands of games that you remember as a kid preloaded onto them. Yeah, that's right. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, Mario, Zelda, all the classics, they're right here in this box. All you got to do is hook this up to your HDMI on your on your HD TV, your flat screen TV, smart TV, 3D TV. It'll work on all of them. As long as you have an HDMI port, it'll hook right up and it'll play. It comes complete with everything you need, including your controller. Guys, this has every game on it from Atari 2600 to Super Nintendo. All the titles. All you have to do is choose your platform, scroll down and choose your game, and play it. It's as simple as that. I want you to watch this video in its entirety, though. I want you to watch everything I have to offer you here. I'm going to tell you how to save every game if you want to save it. I'm going to tell you how to operate this system, how to navigate through it. I'm going to tell you how to shut it down. And I'm going to walk you through some troubleshooting issues if you need any help with that. Any other questions you have, any other concerns you have, and if you do buy one and something happens to it, I guarantee all my products. That means if it breaks, I will fix it. I will replace it for you at my cost. All you have to do is come back in and see me. Guys, all my information, my contact information is on my website. It's www.mattsvintagevideogames.com. Thanks guys for watching. Have a nice day. Okay guys, so on the un unboxing you see this is everything that's included with this kit here. So you have your HDMI cable there in the middle, your power block which is your charger for the wall, and then you have your USB hub if you want to use multiple players you just plug in that hub um, into the USB port for your controller. There is your controller that you get there, but the most important piece would be the retro game machine. That is your system right there guys. Um, on this device is your HDMI, this is where your controller or your controller port hub goes. And then this is your power cord. It plugs into the wall charger and everything is ready to go. Okay, so I... So on booting up the system, you're going to see a bunch of letters on the side of the screen and then that screen there that just flashed. You're going to see a bunch of OKs to the left side followed by a bunch of different words. Uh, if you ever see any anything that says fail in red then you might be having an issue on the motherboard or with the um, chips or something like that. Uh, this here is just my custom logo. I put this on uh, pretty much everything I, I make, all my videos and everything like that. Um, it's just telling you about my company and of course my website. Go to mattsvintagevideogames.com It's going to show you some more stuff on the left side of the screen. Just a bunch of OKs and this job is running. Uh, it's just booting up basically. It takes a little time to do this, about 30 seconds or so. Um, and, then, and then you'll get to the next screen. Um, every little thing about the boot up process, you know, it, it's going to take it a minute or so. You just have to be a little patient with it. So um, this is just normal. This is what the emulation station does. It's what the Raspberry Pi is meant to do. It's just the way it's made. So you just kind of, kind of give it a little bit of time here to to do its job. But it will boot up, and once it does, you'll be ready to go. So now that we're all set up, you are ready to play your game system. And I always recommend just kind of checking it out, you know, uh, go through some different things, make sure the buttons are working correctly, make sure you have volume, things like that. Uh, if you go to the, the screen here, um, any, any of these screens, any of these platforms, basically you choose your platform and scroll down, make sure it's making that sound. Uh, as long as it is, you know, you're ready to play. And all you have to do is just scroll up and down, um, you know, to, to go through, to choose which game you want. You can go up and down with the directional arrows on your D-pad, or you can use your right or left bumper to go down or back, and it'll go a lot faster if you hold it in, considerably faster. So that that's kind of helpful for uh, especially Nintendo and Sega Genesis that have a lot of different titles to scroll through. 
Um, so that's that's the way to do that. Um, the Legend of Zelda is under T for the Legend of, which is kind of strange to me, but that's how they've done these these ROMs for Nintendo. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, but otherwise, it's it's pretty easy to to navigate through here. Uh, what you what you might notice sometimes is that um, the controllers kind of stick a little bit. They're they're kind of aftermarket made in China, so you kind of got to watch that. But uh, for the most part, you just scroll down, decide what you want. If that happens right there, like I just did, like, oops, you just went to the wrong screen, just press your B button to back out of it, go back to where you were, press your A button, and you start back from where you were at before. But it's that simple, guys. Okay, so let's just say that you picked the wrong game and you didn't mean to pick the game or you're, you're just tired of it or it's just stupid and you just don't like it and say, oh man, this is just chess. Yeah, I'm no good at chess. I don't want to play this game anymore. It, just very simply press your start button and your select button at the same time and that'll back you right out of it. And that's all you got to do. Any game that you're in, if you want to play it, you press your A button to select it. Wait till the game loads up just like normal. And if you decide you don't want to play it again, or you don't want to play it anymore, start and select together. That'll back you right out of the game. So when you start this system up for the first time, um, you will see that you'll have to configure your input. It shows up on the screen just like this. Now, I've went ahead and, and synced these controllers for you uh, that come with it, so you should not have to do that. But you can resync it at any time by um, by just pressing your start button when you're on this main page, and the start button will come up, and you'll see a menu. You can just go down to uh, synchronize input and then configure input. Um, it, it's very easy to do. It tells you what to do. It says right on the screen, hold the A button on your device to configure it. So we'll hold down the A button just for a second, let go of it. When you see this screen, it comes up. It tells you exactly what you need to do. You need to sync your controller now. You're going to press on your D-pad. You're going to press up, down, left, right. You're going to press your start button, your select button, your A button, your B button, your X button, or your Y button or whatever buttons you would like to set for your B, your A, your X, and your Y, depending on what controller you have. It might not have those buttons labeled in that way. Then you're going to press your left shoulder, you're going to press your right shoulder. Now since we have nothing else on this controller to config, we don't have the left trigger, we don't have the left thumb, we don't have any of that, just press down any button and hold it just for a second and it'll skip right through that. Just hold it down and skip and let it go. Hold it down and skip and let it go. Hold it down and skip and let it go. We're going to do this repeatedly until we get all the way to the bottom of the screen. And then when we're at the very bottom of the screen, I'll tell you the next step that we have to do. This doesn't take a lot of time. It just takes a couple seconds or so. So when you get to this, we have hotkey enabled. And we're just going to press B to skip it. We're going to press OK, and it's going to say you did not choose hotkey. You don't need to worry about that. So just press your A button, hold it down for a couple seconds, and then let it go. And I know you think that nothing's happening. It is. Just gives it a little bit of time. Everything about these kinds of devices just uh, just take a little bit of time. If you press and hold it too long, you might see another screen that comes up and says, Are you sure you want to config input? Just go to No. You've already done that. Just select No. Um, your A button makes your selections. Your B button goes backwards. So um, just just remember that. Um, A to go forward and B to go back. And like I was uh, saying just a minute ago, um, at any time that you're on this screen right here, you can configure your input. If you've um, done it incorrectly, if you don't like the way your configuration of your buttons are working, uh, anything like that, you want to put a new controller on it that's a little bit different, um, you know, press your start button, go down to configure input, 
and then configure your input and you can do that at any time. Uh, you can use lots of different controllers on this device um, so you do have some options there. Uh, this is a USB wired controller so any USB wired controller most generally is going to work for it. Uh, there are some I would stay away from, some of GameStop's branded products. I would, I would steer clear of those. They don't seem to work. Um, but most things that I've tried, as long as it's a USB wired, it will work with it. Um, and, and please don't think that your wireless 360 or your wireless PS3 controllers will work with the cord. They will not. Just because you plug that cord into it and then try to plug it into the to the Pi, it, it will not read it. So that, that will not do it for you. You have to use a hardwired controller. Um, any hardwired USB, um, most generally, like I said, is going to work uh, 360 or PS3. Um, I recommend getting yourself a Snake Bite. It's a controller they sell at Walmart. It's a PS3 wired controller. Those are about 10 or 12 bucks and they work very well. Um, so I like those. I'm a Sony guy myself. Um, so, you know, that that's what I use and what I recommend. But um, any wired USB controller will work for this device. Okay, so now I want to talk about save states. If you remember back in the day, um, Nintendo, um, even a Sega Genesis, a Atari 2600, uh, you could not save the game. Um, I remember as a kid playing Mario and trying to get all the way to the end of Mario. And we got pretty good at Mario when we was kids, you know. And you had to leave it on. Like when you went to school, you had to leave your Nintendo sitting there at the TV turned on. Because if it got turned off, your game was gone when you got home. You had to start all the way over again. So the only way to save it was to leave it on. <laughs> which is probably bad on a TV and bad on a device. You know, if you do that now with a PS4, you're, you're going to fry it. So, um, But anyway, uh, so the interesting thing about this system <clears throat> is that you now have the ability to save any game at any point, any time you want to. And you can use the save state for every single game on this whole device. Now, the way to do this is to create a save state. In order to create it, you're going to press your right bumper and the select button at the same time. When you do that, it shows you down at the bottom that you saved the save state. Let's try that again. The select button and the right bumper at the same time. Did you see that little yellow flash at the bottom of your screen? That's telling you that you have created the save state. Now that means that your state is saved right there at that specific sp spot on the game. So now you can go forward and if you've gotten to a place that's too tough or you're about to die or you got hit too many times or whatever and you want to go back to that save state just enact that save state by pressing your left bumper and select and you'll go right back to that save state. So you see what I'm saying? You go further in the game then you enact your save state and you go back to that last state that you saved it at. So it's going to take some getting used to, but it, it'll work out really nicely for you. You'll be able to get past some points in the game that you thought you could never get past before, or maybe that you've never gotten past before. Think about it. You can get further in Punch-Out. You can get further in a lot of these games that you just never could get past a certain point. And now you get as far as you can, and create yourself a save state. See, I'm going to create another save state. And then I'm going to try to go on from here. And let's say I just I get I get a little bit further and I get beat up too bad, I go right back to that last save state. So it's really useful, it's really helpful, and it helped me beat this game not too long ago. It helped me beat Double Dragon 2. Uh, and I'm working on Mike Tyson's punch out right now. So the save states are very, very interesting. Uh, you just got to be careful. You don't um, uh, enact a save state in the middle of a place that you wanted to create a save state, or you don't want to um, overwrite your save state by mistake. So it's going to it's going to take a little time. So just practice it before you get really serious about trying to get really far into a game that you've been really, really trying hard to get through. You know, uh, make sure you've got a good handle on how to how to enact the save state and then how to create the save state so that you don't get those too confused.
Okay, so I want to talk now about a couple things that could happen to you while you're playing this game. Uh, one one game that seems to have an issue is Paperboy for the NES. Um, these files, these games are basically ROM files that are that are emulators that are running through certain emulators. It's kind of hard to explain, but um, it's not as technical as you might think. Uh, Paperboy doesn't seem to work. See, I'm pressing my buttons, it's not doing anything. I press start, it's not doing anything. So, let, let me show you what I'm talking about, and let me show you how to correct that. It's very simple. So, we you press the start and select to get back out of that, and I want you to press Paperboy again. Now, when this little box comes up on the screen, I want you to press your A button repeatedly until you see it jumping up on the screen. When it starts jumping up on the screen, let it go. And then this little, this blue screen comes up with this little square box. You're going to go down to number two, which is select emulator for ROM. And then I want you to just go down to the second one or the third one. I, I choose the second one for this game. It seems to work good. It's just called IR Nestopia. And then press your A button. Then after that, I want you to go down to exit without launching, which is all the way at the bottom. And press OK, which is your A button. Now, when you go back into Paperboy it's going to work good for you. So you might have to do what I just said to do there and that's just changing your ROM that it's reading off of. And you can do that for just about any game. Uh, you don't need to do it if it's working fine, but um, if it's not working correctly or looks weird or anything like that, just basically do what I just told you to do and change uh, the emulator and it should run just fine. Uh, but that's, you know, 95% of these games you don't have any issues with. I know this is one that, that you do. So you do have to change the emulator out for that one. But um, otherwise they all work pretty well. And uh, it's, it's a great game. The only other issue that I'm aware of would be a sound issue. Uh, some TVs don't support the HDMI um, as well. In, in which case you might plug this device in and realize that you don't have sound coming out of the unit. And if that happens, I want you to go to RetroPie Configuration. And then once you sh choose your uh, configuration, I want you to just go to Audio. And uh, give it a couple seconds here to boot up the audio settings. And uh, when we get there, I want you to go down to the third selection, which is HDMI. Select that and select audio output to HDMI. Just press OK. And it'll take a couple seconds to go back to the screen you were on. And then you can press your B button and get out of there. And uh, that's all that you need to do in a configuration. I would suggest that you do not let your kids get into configuration because you can mess this device up. This is a little computer. Um, if, you, if you go in there and you change all your settings around and you dump files and you do some crazy stuff, you can end up with a system that doesn't work the next time you turn it on. So just make sure they're not doing that. Um, otherwise, the only other known issue that I can tell you about that I know of would be, and let me try to get to it, it would be Super Mario World Yoshi's Island uh, for the Super Nintendo. Uh, it's a great game. Uh, it doesn't run well. It just doesn't. Uh, there's nothing really that I can do about it to change it. Um, you can play it if you'd like, but it's really hard to play. If you if you listen closely into the volume, you can hear that the sound is just not quite right. It's like it's a little choppy. So, you know, the game will play, but it's it's really not. You know, it's really not really. You don't get the flow of a game that, that, you know, runs really well. And, and most all these games are going to run really well, but you do have one or two here and there that you'll find it just, it, it can be a little bit glitchy. Uh, this is one of them that I know of. Otherwise, I haven't found any others yet, but um, that, that, you know, I haven't played the, the complete library of the 4,000 games that are on this machine, so there is a possibility that, that there's other ones out there that, that kind of have the same issue is this and uh, changing the emulator seems to help but it can also be worse if you change a different one I think the bottom emulator to choose uh, instead of like choosing number two to choose number three it makes it worse for the Super Nintendo so um, you know the, the one it's on seems to work the best out of all of them to be honest with you it's playable but it is a little glitchy 
uh, most games are not, but, but this one is mostly really just in the volume, but it, it does kind of throw your timing off a little bit if you're, if you're not used to it or not expecting it. But other than that, that's all the um, issues that I've ever seen with these systems. Um, if you do have any other issues or anything, like I say, you know, always you can give me a call. You can get a hold of me, contact me, and I'll, I'll help walk you through it. If we can't fix it, I'll, I'll fix the device for you. But as far as the glitches are concerned, that's all that I've, uh, I'm aware of. That's all I've been aware of, and I haven't found any kind of other issues other than that. So now that we're all done playing our Retro Pie, and we want to put it away, I want you to go back to your main screen here, your platform screen, and I want you to just press your start button, and I want you to go all the way down to the bottom to quit, press your A button to select to quit, I want you to go down to shut down system, and then I want you to really shut down system. That's going to shut it down. Now when you see uh, you might be able to see the uh, little green light inside of the Nintendo cartridge itself. After all these words get done on the, on the side of the screen, it'll just kind of go black and, and blank. And then you'll no longer see a little bitty flashing light inside of your Nintendo. That lets you know that your system is off. And then you can unplug it. Uh, is is the best way that I tell you. Like like I've said before, it is a little computer, so I, I wouldn't recommend just leaving it plugged in all the time, especially through a a storm or anything like that. It it you know it, it could fry it just like it could fry your TV or your PlayStation or anything else. So just kind of unplug it when you're done with it, and when you want to play it again, just plug the USB back into the power supply, and and it'll come right on for you.